Hi from Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. We now welcome in the all-time leading scorer in BYU basketball history. That? Current star in Spain, Tyler Haas. It's time for Spanish 101. Tyler, what do you have for us? Hola. <laughs> Hola, como esta? <laughs> que tal? Not bad for the Tagalog-speaking uh, <laughs> Filipino missionary, right? Exactly. Hey, yeah. we learned enough to get by. We, we were good. Could you go to the grocery store and get what you needed? Or did yeah, you... go to the market. You know, we, we lived in a... Mercado. In Mercado, yeah. No, we were the awkward Americans in the town, but <laughs> everyone was really nice to us. Everyone knew that. We lived in a small town, and so people took care of us, for sure. Yeah, you guys don't look American at all. A couple of uh, blondies walking over trying to get some uh, fish or something, right? I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> we stuck out like a sore thumb, for sure. Well, now the Americans are back in America, and here you are, ready to play in the basketball tournament, appropriately named for Team Fredette. When did this start to come to fruition? Yeah, uh, so TJ, um, Jimmer's brother, has been reaching out, trying to get me to play for a few years, and um, it just hasn't hasn't worked quite right with our schedule. But um, this year, I originally told him no. My my wife's having our second child in July, and so I was like, you know, we we just can't make that work. And when my wife found out about that, she said, "What are, what are you doing? <laughs> like, this is a great opportunity. You should do it." So if she's on board, I was like, all right, let's 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 do this thing. You approached it well, because if you had said, no, I'm doing this, perhaps it would have been met differently. <laughs> yeah. But your wife's a former gymnast here, uh, Summer, and she, she knows the drill. She knows the sketch, right? Oh, yeah. No, she gets it, and she's competitive, and um, I think, you know, there's some fear of missing out, too. We want to go see what happens and, and make some noise. Yeah, FOMO's real, right? Yeah. yeah it's, it's real. <laughs> it is. Tyler Haas with us on BYU Sports Nation. Dave Rose is going to coach this team. What do you think about playing for your former head coach at BYU? Yeah, so I, I didn't know that. Um, I said yes, and then I, I found out later he was coaching. And do you I'm, still want to do it? <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. No, I, I'm, I'm thrilled that, that Coach is um, going to be there and uh, we'll be able to reconnect and be on the, the same floor again. I didn't know I'd get that opportunity again, so really excited about playing for him. And I know Paul Peterson, one of the assistants, uh, really well. He would come play with our guys and um, come train with us in the summer. And so just excited to, to be out there and uh, compete at a high level. Yeah, Paul seems like a favorite of every ex-BYU player. Like, people love Paul. Can you wave off anything that Dave Rose calls? Like, can you just call your own play at this point since you're not <laughs> at BYU? Yeah. No, it's a little different team dynamic, right? So I may have some freedom to do that. He can't get mad at me. Like, Yeah, exactly. Still, right? Exactly. There's some liberty there, right? Yeah. How is your game different now compared to when you left BYU? Yeah, I've had to adjust um, a few things and, and definitely um, approach the European game differently than – um, my time at BYU, I feel like I've I've had the ball in my hands a lot more as far as ball screen stuff. I think I'm known as uh, an you know an off ball screen guy coming off down screens and playing in transition. But I still try to do those things. But I I, I like the pick and roll situations. I feel like I make decisions better and um, like to think I'm a better defender as well. <laughs> You, you've been crazy consistent. Like at BYU, your senior year, you shot something like 37 percent, 48 percent. Uh, from three, 48% from the field. That's what you shot in Spain. Have you been like the same shooter for a long time? Because that's incredible <laughs> consistency. Yeah, I in my mind, I'd like to think that. There's definitely been um, some challenges and some ups and downs um, in my pro career. And uh, a huge part of the game, obviously, is just staying confident and believing in your game and um, uh, believing that, you're the best player on the floor. And, you know, that's my mental approach every time I, I step out there is I'm, I'm going to do my best and, and try and dominate the game. Jimmer Fredette rediscovered his mojo in China. Do you feel like you've kind of done the same thing in your latest Spanish league venture? For sure. I think this last year um, I, I definitely found some more confidence, kind of found myself again, found my rhythm. I love the coach that I played for. Loved the club that I was a part of, and um, they they ran stuff for me. They looked to me to be a leader on the team, and um, just really had a fun year. It was it was great. 
Didn't they throw a birthday party for Goldie or something as well? <laughs> yeah. Team? Yeah. So, yeah, every, when when someone had a birthday, you had to bring food, bring a snack after practice. And you know, my birthday is the 11th and Goldie's is the 10th. And so I was like, hey, I'm just going to bring Goldie in summer and have everyone sing to her. And it, it was fun. They, they were really good to her. I, I was the only married one on the team with a kid. And so they... They loved her. Yeah, that's yeah. The, the BYU guy, of course. Right? <laughs> yeah, he's the only married guy with a kid. Yeah. Describe to us what it's like playing in Europe, because there's this idea that, okay, if you don't play in the NBA, it's like, well, I don't know what happened. We're seeing that you can have a great career, you can make good money, you can have a great life playing overseas, and we're seeing that with Brandon Davies, with you, obviously, with Jim Fredette and others. Yeah, it, it's about finding the right situation and the right fit. Hoping um, they actually pay you. Hope, yeah. They're horror stories, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's some some interesting clubs over there that don't th do things the right way. But, um, yeah, you just have to you have to trust your agent first off um, and then get in there and, and work hard and, um, you know, f find your role and, and do your best. But, uh, you know, I think Brandon and Jimmer have done an amazing job. Brandon was, you know, one of the best players in Europe this year. And, and he's going to Spain now. Yeah, he's going, yeah, going Barcelona. to Barcelona. That's like one of the best spots you can be in. Um, just really happy for those guys. But, yeah, it, it can be an amazing lifestyle, you know, if you have a uh, family over there and you have people supporting you and surrounding you. It can be a lonely lifestyle, too, um, if you're over there alone. But we, we've loved our experience and loved meeting new people and um, enjoying new cultures and uh, visiting different cities uh, on off days. And, um, you know, it's definitely times we'll look back on and be appreciative of. Talking with Tyler Haas on BYU Sports Nation, what does the future hold for you in basketball and just in life in general? Because as you mentioned, you're going to have your second child. Congratulations on that, by Thank the way. You. Very Thank exciting. You. Yeah. So what, what does the next calendar year hold for you? Not, not quite sure. So I'm playing in, in the, the basketball tournament, and uh, we're going to try and make some noise in that and prepare for that the right way. Um, I started a job uh, at a supply chain company in Salt Lake called Visible. Um, that's where Terry and Tim, Tim McComb, oh, are working. And so, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's fun. We have a good time with those guys. Um, but so I'll be doing that, and I'll just see what opportunities are out there, see what options are available, and if something makes sense, we'll we'll do it. But that's kind of that's kind of the the plan for now. So if we need you for a, a city league team, you're available. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Ugh, I, I don't know, Jeremy. No, say no, Tyler. Just pass the ball. Say no. I just need you to pass the ball. That's it. You pass the ball. No, no, no. no. You, you, no I, I'm cranking from three. Let's go. Uh, let's talk about your brother TJ. So he's going to be a senior. It, we thought it might be a lonely existence for him this year. Oh, TJ. Well, he'll be the guy, I guess. Here's Yoli Childs coming back. Jake, Jake Toulson's coming over. New coaching staff. Mm -hmm. It's a very different uh, situation from two months ago for him. For sure. No, I, I think he's really, really excited about uh, those new additions, Yoli coming back and, and Jake. Um, but he's really excited to, to play for Coach Pope and loves the coaching staff already. They've come in and hit the ground running and have these guys working really hard and ha have created, a, you know, a, a great vision for, for the future and, and definitely portrayed that well to the players. I think they're they're catching hold of that and and, and working extremely hard, like uh, they've brought a new passion and, and energy that has been great and, you know, all positive stuff right now for sure. All of a sudden, this feels like a team that should make the NCAA tournament. At least that's how we collectively feel from We're putting our the pressure on them. We yeah. think they're good. We, we think yeah. this team definitely has enough talent to get back to a place that they haven't been since you were here at BYU. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about BYU and the expectation to get back to the NCAA tournament given the return of Jake and Yoli and with the emergence of your little brother TJ? Yeah, that, that's always the goal, right, is to, to get to the tournament and win games in the tournament. Um, and that, that's the goal for this new coaching staff and new team. Uh, they definitely have the talent. I agree with you guys. Like, the talent is there. Um, it's, you know, there's lots of other things that have to come together, obviously. The, um, there's got to be some team camaraderie that, that is great. And, um, you know, the coaching staff and players have to mesh. And, uh, but they're, I think they're on track to, to do that. And I'm excited to follow it and uh, support them. About a month ago, we were talking to TJ in Nashville at the Fan Fest, and uh, we asked him the following question. 
Who wins in one on one right now between you and Tyler? <laughs> I have to say me for sure. <laughs> yeah. right? have, have you guys played one-on-one -on -one a bunch? I no, mean, recently, it, growing up probably? Yeah, it, it's been a long time. It was it was more right when I got home from my mission that we probably played the most. Um, and? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's the all-time leading scorer. It's okay. He's pretty good, right? <laughs> he is pretty good. <laughs> so what we take from that is TJ, when he got home from his mission, ran into a buzzsaw of you and couldn't beat you, but now he feels like his game's good enough to compete. What do you think about all this? No, you could definitely hear a little doubt in his <laughs> voice, for sure. No question about that. He knows who the older brother is. At what point did you realize that you were two different players? Uh, probably from a young age, really young age. Like, Tej, ever since I can remember, he's always been shooting threes. It was... How, however deep I can shoot it, um, you know, even fifth, sixth grade, it was it was all about shooting deep shots, and that's never been really who I am. Um, mine's more mid-range stuff. Uh, we obviously have different, we play different positions, we have different body types. Um, there's things that he does really well that I don't do well. Um, but, and so uh, our one-on-one -on -one games are, are very interesting because our, our games are just different. It's good for us to go against each other. And it's been fun to, you know, since he got into high school, he would come down and, and play with us at BYU. And it's, it's been fun to be out there on the same floor. And I feel like our games complement each other well when we play. It, it would have been fun to play together for sure. I want to see, like, a, the father-sons, <laughs> like, a, like a, any, any combination of dad and sons against the Haas. That would be, I mean, obviously if there's somebody with a big man, perhaps that's the only advantage they could get. That'd be interesting. Would be interesting, yeah. I, you know what I, else I want you to do? Because the mid-range game for certain people is just like non-existent, like the Rockets, they just refuse to shoot a mid-range number. I want you to email Daryl Morey, the GM this summer. <laughs> just be like, hey, if you need a mid-range guy, I'm here. I'll just be that to guy. see if he'll respond. I'll be that guy. Because the, sure. it's, it's dunks and layups. Or, or, sorry, dunks, layups, or threes, right? Mm -hmm. So you're kind of uh, this, this uh, unicorn in 2019. Did you, did you get that sense in, even in Spain? Uh, for sure. The game has totally changed. Like the, the floor is a lot more spread out and teams are shooting a lot more threes. I think the European game's a little bit different, um, a little more tactical and um, there's not that three second in the lane rule. And so people pack the paint. Um, you can goal 10, but, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can goal 10. Um, but I, I've still found, found a way to contribute at, at a high level. Um, with that that mid-range shot and I've obviously had to expand my range and shoot more threes and uh, that's what teams want and and uh, you know teams in different leagues are, are looking for those things and so if I want to keep playing I got to shoot that three well I just had this vision of you and TJ playing together on team for debt at some point in the basketball tournament in the future so never say never. <laughs> and then Marty Could comes off the bench sure. and gives it three <laughs> minutes. And five fouls. Three solid minutes, five fouls. Maybe a three or a made free yeah, throw yeah, or something exactly. like that. We would love for you to sign our Sailor Coog flag. I don't think you've signed this latest edition. Nice. Awesome. Because it's been a while since you've been in studio. You need the all-time leading score. To. Yes, we need your signature, and let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma to go and uh, crush it in the basketball awesome. tournament. And I'll have you know, I shoot mid-range jumpers. People are like, oh, you're the mid-range guy. I'm like... Thank you, I think. I like it, Jeremy. <laughs> That's great. That's great. You want me to sign it now? Yes. Yeah, go for it. Okay, the all-time leading score in studio. Tyler Hobbs. Scored more than this. Jimmer. Yes, he Scored did. Scored more than Jimmer. He's How got that, that on the great Jimmer. Yes. Coming up, describing BYU topics in an emoji. We've got a new game. And we have goals, and then there are stretch goals. That conversation continues next. This is BYU Sports Nation.